Okay, so here we are, objective two with complex fractions. You will be able to simplify complex fractions. And um, the, the slide here, the picture here, is an infographic from the movie Inception. And uh, perhaps you're not old enough to see this movie yet, since it's rated R. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it for you if you haven't seen it, but a major plot point in it is that, you know, dreams within dreams within dreams, okay? Different levels of dreams. So, fractions, complex fractions, are fractions within fractions. That's all it is. A fraction within another fraction. And you can see this one's pretty complex. You look at it and you go, oh my gosh, that's a very complex looking fraction. That's exactly what it is. The picture here, this is a picture of, um, now when you become a 12th grader, I believe the, the Shakespearean play that you're supposed to read is Hamlet. I think that's 12th grade. But anyway, in it, there's a play within a play. It's the same kind of concept, right? It's a play that's within a play, a dream within a dream, a fraction within a fraction. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to simplify these, these things. Okay, so there's basically two methods, and we're going to examine both of them. Sometimes you want to use one or the other one, depending on the problem that you're given. So the first one is simplify the top and the bottom parts just like they were just separate um, problems. So I would, on this one, I would add up the tops one-fifth plus three-halves, and then I would add up the bottoms two-thirds minus one-sixth, okay? And then now I would turn this into a division problem by multiplying by the reciprocal. You'd flip the second one and you would multiply, okay? There's the first method. The second method is, well, why don't we just multiply the top and the bottom by the least common denominator of all the fraction, fractions combined? And this, this one work kind of like magic. You'll see it's like magic. All the fractions will disappear on the top and the bottom, all the denominators. Okay, so we're going to try both of these methods right here. So first one, we're going to try just simplifying the fraction on the top, simplify the fraction on the bottom, and then turn this into a division problem by multiplying by the reciprocal of the second one. Okay, so across the top here, uh, a common denominator is going to be 10. So I'm going to have 10, so on the whole entire top. Uh, I need to multiply this one by 2 and this one by 2, so I'd have 2 tenths plus 10 on this one. I'd have to multiply that by 5 and this by 5, so that's 15. All right, now I'm just working with the top here, so the whole problem is not done yet. Uh, adding up the tops, so I got 17 over 10. All right, let's do the same thing down at the bottom. Common denominator on this one is just going to be a 6 because 3 goes into it. And I'd have to multiply the first fraction by uh, 2 or 2. Okay. So I'd have 4 over 6, right? Yep, minus 1 over 6. And that would give me a 3 over 6. Hmm, but 3 over 6, that reduces to 1 half. So let's just, this fraction line is a little bit too big. Let's make it smaller. So this becomes 17 over 10 divided by 1 half. Okay, this right here means divide. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to turn this into 17 over 10 divided by 1 half. How do you divide two fractions? That's what the last lesson was about. You multiply by the reciprocal of the second one. 17 over 10 times, flip it, 2 over 1. Can I cancel anything? Oh, yes. So that's 1, and this would be a 5, and I would just simply have 17 fifths. So all of that simplifies the 17 fifths, and you're done. Okay, let's try that with uh, the second method. So the second method was just multiply the top and the bottom by the least common denominator of all of the denominators. So I have a 5, a 2, a 3, and a 6. So if I do this by the least common denominator thing, or at least common multiple that we did before, I got a 5 from the first one, a 2 from the second one, a 3 from the last one, and the last one is 6, which simplifies as 2 times 3. So if I look for the least common denominator, that's going to be, I need a factor of 2, I need a factor of 3, 
and I need a factor of 5. Let's see, that is altogether uh, 30. Multiplying by 30. So if I multiply the top and the bottom by 30, watch what magical thing will happen. So times all this by 30 on the top and by, whoops, by 30 on the bottom. And I could do that because 30 divided by 30 is 1. Now, whenever you do this, of course, you have to distribute. So, 1 fifth times 30. I'm going to write the steps out. Like you doing it on your paper, you may not write all of these steps out. So, 1 fifth times 30 plus 3 halves times 30. And then on the bottom, it's going to be 2 thirds times 30 minus 1 sixth times 30. Right, you, you probably would have just multiplied that in your head, perhaps using a calculator. So 1 fifth times 30 is 6. 2 thirds, so 2 goes in here. Uh, 15 times, right, and I get 45. Over, um, that goes in there 10 times, I'd have 20. Here, minus 5. So what do I have? I have 51 over... 15. That's not what we had before. I think this simplifies. I think 3 goes in the top and the bottom. So 3 goes into that 17 times, 3 goes into that 5. And now I do have the same thing. Which method did you prefer? Sometimes one works better than the other one. You just have to try something on one of the problems that you're given. Now, here we're just looking at it with some numbers. Now we need to look at it with some algebraic expressions. Let's see how that's going to work out. Whoops, wrong direction. Look at that one. Complex fraction. How about we do this by just multiplying? I can, I can look and see what the least common denominator is going to be. That's, that's very, very simple. Why don't I just multiply the top and the bottom? So this is the second method. Top and the bottom by the least common denominator overall, which is going to be x times x minus 5. Okay, Rowan's awake, so I'm going to have to take a little break here and then come back and see in just a little bit. All right, uh, took care of Rowan, and uh, I stepped out for a bit of a haircut. Hope you don't mind. Probably makes my head look a, a little bit smaller. Um, let's see, where were we? We are working on a complex fraction. What we decided to do is multiply the top and the bottom by the least common multiple of all the fractions. So it was the simplest thing because it was just basically the product of x times x minus 5. Yeah, so let's pick that up right where we left off right here. And how about, um, go ahead and write it so it's very, very clear on each of these. So I have x times x minus 5. Then I'm going to be multiplying times... Uh, not a 1, a 6 over x minus 5. That's on the top. And then plus the same thing. So basically you're having to distribute here, right? This times this, this times this. x times x minus 5 times the fraction 1 over x. All of this over... We do the same thing. have to distribute on both of these. x times x minus 5. And we're going to multiply that times uh, uh, 3 over x. Now, this, this step that I'm doing, I'm just doing this to make it very, very clear uh, of me multiplying these things out. You, you could skip this step if, if it makes sense to you and just distribute that at on, on your head, in your head. How about in your head? So x times x minus 5. All of this times 2 over x minus... Actually, I'm just going to make that a plus and distribute that to a negative. You know, that'll just make it a little bit clearer. Okay, so across the top, let me just switch colors so it's obvious I'm canceling all kinds of stuff out. Okay, so this will cancel out with this, and then I'd multiply this 6 times the x, because everything else is gone. Across the top is the 6x. This time, the x... And that x will cancel out, and 1 times x minus 5 is just plus x minus 5. So realize what I just did there is I got rid of all the fractions on the top. And that's what will happen if I multiply the top and the bottom by the least common denominator. 
Okay, on the bottom, the x and this x will cancel out, and then I'll have to distribute my 3 through here, so 3x minus 15. Okay, and the x minus 5 and the x minus 5 will cancel out, and it's a negative 2 times this x minus 2x. Now let's clean up all of this. So 7x minus 5 over, and then x minus 15. And there we go. Nothing I can pull back out and simplify, so that's it. That's the final answer. Whew, a lot of work, but rewarding. Um, I think we got another one of these. Let's give this a try. Whoa, look at that thing. Um, yeah, crazy. So this is one of the more challenging ones. I think I pulled this off of some challenge problems. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to turn this into a division problem. And I'm going to do that just because I've got only one thing on the bottom. So when I'm dividing, dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is equal to, this is the top here, x squared over the square root of x squared plus 1 minus the square root of x squared plus 1. All of this multiplied by, take the reciprocal of that, so this is times 1 over x squared. Okay, and then basically I'm going to distribute here. On the, the first fraction, the x squared up top and the x squared on the bottom, they're going to cancel out, leaving me a 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, and on the next one, it's not, so I'm going to have the square root of x squared plus 1 all over x squared. What's the common denominator between those two? Well, the common denominator between those two is just going to be the product of them because they're both different. You can't factor it any simpler, so the common denominator here is going to be an x squared times the square root of x squared plus 1. So I'm just going to combine this all in one step. So what is this one on the far left missing? It's missing in a factor of x squared. So x squared on top, x squared on the bottom. Okay, and so what's the next one missing? It's missing the square root of x squared plus 1. So it, that's what it gets multiplied by on the top and the bottom. Square root of x squared plus 1, square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, so across the top, just multiplying these out, I have x squared minus, are you ready for this? What happens when I multiply the square root of x squared plus 1 times the square root of x squared plus 1? I get x squared plus 1. The square roots cancel each other out. It's like this. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is equal to just 5, right? It's just a little bit more complicated because it's got some algebra in it. All right, so uh, hey, look at this. This is going to cancel out with that. Distribute your negative sign through. So you have a final answer of negative 1 over x squared divided by square root of x squared plus 1. I'm going to leave it just like that. Don't worry about the fact that there's a square root of x squared plus 1 on the bottom. It's going to be perfectly okay. Now, you're probably going to have to try some of these out for yourself so you can kind of get a handle on what it, what it's uh, blah, blah, blah. Get a handle on how to do these all by yourself. So um, here are two of them for you to try. Complex fractions, get rid of all the fractions, left with just it's a single fraction at the very, very end. Pause the video. How'd you do? Did they freak you out? I hope they didn't freak you out too bad. Lee. So here are your final answers. On the first one, what I decided to do is just multiply the top and the bottom by the least common denominator of all of the denominators. That turned out to be x plus 5 times x minus 3. Okay, and uh, across the top, pretty clear. I just crossed out or fact, um, canceled out the x plus 5, so then I had to distribute the 3 through the x minus 3 on the top. So that's what appears in green there. And then on the bottom, the x minus 3 would cancel out with this x minus 3, leaving you with a 2 that you'd have to distribute to x plus 5, which is in red right there. Okay, And then you have to pretend like the red crossed out is not there anymore, because now you have to 
uh, multiply both of those times 1 over x plus 5. This time the x plus 5 factors cancel out and you're distributing 1 times x minus 3. And that's what you get in blue right there. And then finally, combining your tops and your bottoms, there you have it. So yes, you could have pulled out a 3 of the, at, out of the top because they have a common factor. And that would just be 3 times x minus 3. But it didn't help you out any because you can't cancel anything out with the bottom. So what I have in the box there is perfectly acceptable. Okay, over there on number two, it was easier just to turn this into a, a multiplication problem by multiplying by the reciprocal. And that's always going to be the case if there's only one thing on the bottom. If there's only one thing on the bottom or if you can make it one thing on the bottom, then it's going to be easier for you to just multiply by the reciprocal. If I look over there on number one, there were two things that were on the bottom. It was just easier to multiply by the least common multiple on the top and the bottom. If this whole entire number one was flipped over, then I would do it more like number two, multiplying by the reciprocal, okay? So uh, distributing across the top, across the top on the first one, you'd have the square root of x over 2x, multiplying top times top and bottom times bottom. On the second one, however, the square root of x cancels out, leaving you with just what I have in green right there, 1 sixth. So now I have two fractions I have to add together. They need a common denominator. It needs to have a factor of 6, and it needs to have a factor of x. So I have to multiply the, top, uh, the first fraction, top and bottom, by 3, and the second fraction by x. And when you multiply them, add them together, there you have it. Final answer, 3 squared x plus x all divided by 6x. And don't go trying to cancel out these x's because they don't cancel out. That's it. That's the final answer. All right, so I hope that you have enjoyed your, an your uh, lesson on some like really, really powerful fractions, adding and subtracting rational expressions, and simplifying complex fractions. So here you have, <laughs> in this picture, it's pretty wonderful. It's another example where you have a common denominator. If you're going to add these family members together, you would just now add their heads together. That would be fun. Okay, so uh, your assignment to add fractions, I just need to make my bottom, ma bo bottom match? How about your bottoms match, Rowan? Okay, anyway, uh, make sure you get that uh, worksheet printout. Bring that to class next time and see you in class.